Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're going to have a great show today. Our friend and colleague, Dr. AJ Tarpoff, is going to join us. We're going to talk about flies. We're going to talk about flies and cattle. It's going to be a great show, so stick around. At Merck Animal Health, we wake up each day seeking new innovations to keep your herd healthy. This is why we're proud to now include AllFlex Livestock Intelligence in our portfolio of solutions. With AllFlex, we can provide the tools to identify, monitor, and trace each animal within a herd. Its state-of-the-art offerings deliver real-time insights to help you optimize productivity. Merck Animal Health and AllFlex Livestock Intelligence for our animals, our industry, and our future. The Alert is on Farm Pregnancy Test for us has been an unbelievable time saver because we can do it whenever we want. My favorite part about Alertus on Farm, we can get results fast. You know, in 20 minutes, you know whether that cow goes to pasture A, B, or C. It's just very efficient. It's gonna make you a lot of money. You're not gonna have open cows standing there all winter looking at you, and you can do it on your time. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Look who we got here, Dr. AJ Tarpoff. So thankful that you'd take the time to spend with us. Dr. Tarpoff is the uh, Extension Bovine Veterinarian for the state of Kansas. He's an associate professor in the Department of Animal Science and has been a friend and colleague of mine for many years yeah. and uh, um, has just doing some wonderful things for our industry. But one of the things I caught a couple of your talks on flies and I'm like, hey, we need to get him on the show and, and talk about flies. So I mean, flies and cattle production, it seems like they go hand in hand and it's a constant threat and a pest that we all have to deal with. Uh, whether we're uh, cow-calf operation, whether we're in confinement, dairy operations, uh, all cattle operations have to manage some level of fly control. And so what do we worry about? Well, it's not just any fly. There are specific flies we have concern about. Uh, first and foremost, especially for our cow-calf operators, is the horn fly. Okay, now horn fly, seldom do producers go up and see the actual fly or look at, it, look at it under a microscope, but we know what kind of fly they are on where they are on the animal, how, they, how their life cycle actually happens. So horn flies spend their entire life cycle on our cows. Okay. So during the summer months, you go out and see a group of cows and there are all these black flies on the back sides of animals. Yep. Those are horn flies. Okay. And they're blood feeders. Uh, they only leave the animal to dry, drop eggs in fresh manure. So it's, they live on the animal, only leave you know, just to deposit eggs. Uh, the second one is stable flies. Now, if any, any cattleman, cattlewoman has been out in a stable uh, or in a corral and they've been bitten by a stable fly, they remember the bite. <laughs> Extremely <laughs> <Yeah>. painful bite. <laughs> um, now, these stable flies, they, they are also blood feeders, but they have a very nasty, painful bite and they bite the lower legs. So what we see in our animals is pacing. They will swish their tails, they'll snap their feet. Uh, and many times early in the morning, on a nice cool morning, you'll find your cattle in a pond. They're not in a pond to be able to get you know, cool uh, down. They're actually trying to escape the biting flies that only uh, feed during the daytime hours. So the stable fly, very painful, uh, causes a lot of disruption, especially in confinement on the perimeter pens, so either at a, a dairy or a feedlot. Stable flies are a big deal. 
Uh, the other two flies that we manage kind of go hand in hand and often get confused with each other. And that would be one, face flies, and two, house flies. Yep. Right? So face flies, it was kind of a new introduction to North America uh, several decades ago. Now, face flies, believe it or not, uh, they don't live in the southern part of the United States. So Texas, Oklahoma, all the way to Florida, there are no face I flies. I have no clue. Right. Uh, now, face flies, they don't blood feed. Their mouth parts are like different sandpaper. So it's a rough, abrasive, and they feed on secretions, okay? So nasal or ocular secretions. And so we'll find them around the eye, uh, especially if we have some tearing. Uh, we can see those and that, that rough sandpaper activity can actually damage the eye and lead to pink eye or transmit the bacteria that causes pink eye. Uh, but often gets confused as the house fly. House fly yeah. looks very similar to the uh, to the face fly, and it, it will also feed on the nasal secretions and the ocular secretions around the eye from cattle. Uh, so both of them, they can uh, lay you know, face flies lay eggs in fresh manure. House flies, they can lay eggs just about anywhere. Okay, so they're pretty ubiquitous. Uh, we see most of these, other than face fly, uh, that's more of our northern climate, kind of Kansas and north. Uh, but the other ones are generally just about everywhere. I'll be damned. Well, so if you see them on the face and you're down south, it's a house fly. That's correct. I'll be damned. Well, I told you we we're going to learn something. When we come back, we're going to talk about how to control these flies, some different things to mitigate them in your herd. We've got an expert here. We'll be right back. At Daniels Manufacturing, we know that you're not always going to be able to work cattle in a permanent facility. That's why we have designed portable equipment built with the same quality and innovation as our stationary equipment. Our portable equipment can be set up with stationary corrals or just pull the pins and move to a new location. And setting up our portable double alleyways and our all hydraulic portable chute is quick and easy. Keep yourself and your cattle safer with less stress working in the field with our portable equipment. For more information or to find your perfect portable solution, contact Daniels Manufacturing Company today. Nasalgen 3 is a new three-way intranasal BRD vaccine that offers young calves unrivaled protection against devastating respiratory diseases, including IBR, BRSV, and PI3. And it has a unique blue shadow, so there's no second guessing which animals have been vaccinated. To up your protection, choose new Nasalgen 3 PMH, the first and only five-way intranasal vaccine on the market. Talk to your veterinarian and visit nasalgen.com to learn more. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. ValleyVet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff, who's a veterinarian, and he serves as the extension beef veterinarian for the state of Kansas mm -hmm. and works with people all across our country. Um, associate professor here in the Department of Animal Science, uh, just a, a wealth of information. And obviously you got to set up great talking about the different flies that we have to deal with. So how are we going to deal with them? So control of any of these fly uh, species, okay, it, it's challenging. Okay, and it causes a lot of headache for a lot of producers. Uh, but I think it's really important that we walk through, understand the life cycle of these pests, target which pests we're after, okay, and then try to have a kind of multimodal approach to really have good control to mitigate the impacts of these animals. Uh, because at the end of the day, it is costly. There is an economic driving factor here. Um, horn flies, it's been estimated that up to a billion dollars of economic losses to the United States beef industry. Okay, one billion dollars. I mean, so it's yes, it's costly, but it, it's also costing us not doing anything. So that's where we take kind of a system approach, okay? Uh, what's happening in the environment? What can we do to the environment? What can we do on animal? Okay, and I think that's a good way to break it down. Now, in the environment, I mentioned several, several of these fly species lay eggs in fresh manure. Yep. Okay, and that's fresh undisturbed manure. Okay, so if a fecal pie falls out and cattle trample over the top of it or there's movement through there, no, none of those eggs hatch. None of that larva survives. Okay, so it's kind of undisturbed fecal material. Now, that's fresh manure. Now, on the other side is where we focus most of our environmental control is decaying organic matter. Okay, uh, what is decaying organic matter? 
Well, it's uh, piled up manure. It is spilled feed around the feed bunks. It is tall vegetation and weeds on the perimeter of our fences. Those are either resting areas or breeding areas for things like stable flies and house flies. So that's where we focus most of our cleanliness and environmental control is just a basic cleaning up, yep. right? Yep. And so where we focus- Get rid that, of the old vegetation, get mm -hmm. rid of bale rings, different things. Now I'm glad you brought up bale rings because bale rings, stable flies have historically just been a barnyard confinement problem. We're seeing major stable fly issues in pasture settings. I'll be dang. Now, where did that happen? Believe it or not, winter feeding sites. Where we feed our hay, how we feed our hay during the winter months, we always have leftover hay residue. Yep. And anybody that's fed out of a bale ring, they see the cow take one bite and they pull this big string of straw or hay and it just gets pulled out for about 100 yards. So we have all this <laughs> leftover residue, all, the, all this waste of feed. Yep. Well, that's the perfect decaying organic matter that stable flies thrive in. So one of the best environmental controls is uh, outside of cleaning around bunks, cleaning you know manure piles, scraping, you know, kind of our basic stuff is winter feeding sites. We have to disturb that leftover hay residue, move our bale rings, uh, run a hair row over it, uh, pile it, compost it, we can burn it. I've actually got a neighbor that burns yeah. their, uh, their uh, hay piles in the spring uh, that they'll pile all that back up, burn it, and he actually works that ground and replants. So it's uh, everybody can do it a little bit different, but cleanliness is really the key for environmental control. Cool. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll have more with Dr. Tarpoff. We're talking about flies, fly control, environment, animal. It's a great show. We'll be right back. The Alert is on farm pregnancy test for us has been unbelievable time saver because we can do it whenever we want. My favorite part about Alert Us on Farm, we can get results fast. You know, in 20 minutes, you know whether that cow goes to pasture A, B, or C. It's just very efficient. It's gonna make you a lot of money. You're not gonna have open cows standing there all winter looking at you, and you can do it on your time. Relationships are the foundation of agriculture. Proud of the relationships that we built within the department and the industry. These are the people that make our worlds go around on a day-to-day -day basis, and they're the foundation of everything that we do. Those relationships are built on trust and respect. We involve our students in the relationship building process by allowing them the opportunity to meet with industry leaders and professionals. Iowa State University Beef Teaching Farm, and we're grateful to be part of an industry that's built on relationships. They're here, they're hungry, and they can't be stopped with ivermectin. Choose Safeguard when you deworm your cattle to take out resistant parasites like brown stomach worm, cuperia, nematodirus, and others. With Safeguard's efficacy, you can kill more resistant worms in your cattle, so you don't leave potential on the table. Consult your veterinarian for the diagnosis and treatment of parasitism, then bite back at safeguardworks.com. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff, who is the Kansas Extension Beef Specialist here at Kansas State University. And uh, 
we're talking about flies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we have confinement animals, we, you know, have to focus on the environment. Now when we have range animals, we got to have stuff that travels with them. Yep, absolutely. So uh, things that on animal, right? Uh, some of these flies live their entire life cycle on the animal, like the horn fly. Other, other flies, they spend a short amount of time feeding and then they go back to their, their environment, where they rest, where they breed, everything else. So we really need something on the animal to have better control of some of these pests. And one of the most common used is fly tags. Right, right? absolutely. Uh, so they are these insecticide impregnated ear tags. They wear them on the ears and we have constant exposure of that, par of that insecticide to those parasites in the environment. Now, before I get into how we select those, I think it's important to understand resistance against some of the, our insecticide classes, especially with horn flies, it's real and it does occur. And the reason for that is no insecticide is 100% effective. And horn flies can have up to 32 generation intervals in one grazing season. Oh my gosh. So you can see how if we have a few that are resistant, how they can just multiply and multiply and multiply through the season. So that's why it's important that if we use ear tags, we do have to use them appropriately. Uh, how we select these, uh, we do have to rotate insecticide classes whenever we're choosing ear tags. Uh, we do have three insecticide classes whenever we're talking about ear okay. tags. Uh, we have organophosphates, which yep. is the oldie, you know, that's been around forever. We have pyrethrins. Okay, so, uh, and they're synergized, highly effective. Uh, we also have an avermectin, it's called avermectin. So we do have three different insecticide classes when we're talking about ear tags. And what's currently recommended is we rotate insecticide class each year. Oh, okay. So every three years. Yeah, so every three years you go through the full cycle. And the reason for that is uh, pyrethins especially, if we use them more than one year in a row, we can already develop some pretty massive resistance to some of those flies. So that's why we use them, we protect them, but we rotate them year to year. Uh, the other important piece with ear tags, before I get away from that, yeah, yeah. is we do have to take them out at the end of the season. <laughs> because the, the insecticide never really goes away. It just drops below the level that it actually works against those parasites. Oh, so then we so, get even more resistance. So we get more resistance at a really low dose. So at the end of each season, and for most cattle uh, cow calf operators, we're thinking preg check. Next time the animal comes through the chute, we put those uh, those tags in. Uh, you know, a grass turnout maybe in May. We can expect maybe up to five months of control. But come preg check, uh, or we re have reduced efficacy, it's time to remove those ear tags. So talk to me too about um, you know skimping and only putting one ear tag yep. in or something to that nature because can't that create some resistance as well? Not, not necessarily resistance, but decrease efficacy. Uh, most of those tags, if you read the, uh, the label, having uh, one tag in each ear is for tick control, okay? And how these uh, tags work is it's a daily application. As cattle groom themselves and lick down their side, they are rubbing that tag <laughs> all the way down their sides. So it's, an, it's a self-application device. Uh, so when we have full coverage, we have better control for ticks and for flies. So one for calves generally and two for cows. Correct. Perfect. Well, it's great information. When we come back, we'll talk about some of the uh, sprays and mm -hmm. we'll talk about uh, some of the feed throughs. You're watching Doc Talk and we're sure glad you joined us. Dr. Nels here, folks. We're super excited about this book on hiring. Have you made a bad hire? Have you hired someone you wish you wouldn't have? Are you looking to hire? It's a great short read on helping you in the hiring process. You can find it on Amazon, Kindle, Audible, or find it at drnels.com. Check it out there. We'd love to see you there. If you're looking for innovative livestock handling products that focus on efficiency and safety, Daniels Manufacturing Company is who you want to choose. With low-stress cattle handling being of the utmost importance, this family-owned business is focused on quality, not quantity. The company prides themselves on prioritizing the animal's well-being by staying on the cutting edge of design and only using the best materials and manufacturing operations. For more information on getting the product that will work best for you, contact Daniels Manufacturing Company today. We see you, working hard from the early mornings to the late nights and every hour in between. We see you. We see the pursuit, the desire, the effort, the hope, the goal of being a champion. 
and we see that you need a partner to keep your animals healthy and happy. With our countless products and quick and reliable shipping together, we can do just that. To the cowboys and cowgirls, to the dreamers, we see you. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. ValleyVet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff. He's an associate professor in the Department of Animal Science at Kansas State University. He teaches quite a few classes. Yep. Uh, to our undergrad students and, and uh, sits on graduate students uh, committees and, and guides graduate students. Um, but he's also uh, out in the state providing information as the state beef veterinarian. Um, let's talk about, we've talked about the tags, let's talk about some of the other products that people can use to, to get flies under control. Right, so next most common that's uh, you commonly see at the feed store, you know, wherever you're purchasing products, uh, livestock fly spray. Yeah. Okay, so it could be uh, concentrate where we mix with water and we uh, spray with an applicator. Uh, we also have some newer, really high concentrated products that are just kind of a pour on. Uh, we may only have, uh, you know, 10 to 30 cc's or milliliters per animal, and that's for a, a fully mature cow. Hmm. So highly concentrated, we apply a small volume, uh, but because it's so concentrated, we have a pretty good coverage on those. Uh, sprays come in a lot of different forms. We can apply it a lot of different ways. Prices are all over the place, uh, but when it comes to sprays or pour-ons, especially those high concentrated pour-ons, it's very important for proper application. Yeah. Okay. Uh, these sprays, they're not systemic, so they don't get it absorbed into the bloodstream of the cow. It has to come in contact with the fly itself. Uh, so if you read the label on some of those uh, high concentrated pour-ons, we have to apply that product from the back of the pole, right on the back of the head, all the way to the tail head. So it's really important that we get full coverage, proper application to get the most benefit out of, out of I've that. I've seen investment. a lot of people that said, well, I used the pour-on or whatever, and they just <laughs> in one spot, and that's not going to No, uh, it, it's, it's trying to get full coverage on the entire animal is really what we're after. And sprays, because they're diluted product, we truly have to coat the entire animal whenever we're using right. those sprays. So it's labor intensive, we do have to do that, uh, but we can, we can put together a pretty cheap spray for just a few cents a, uh, per head, but it takes a lot of labor to get proper coverage on that animal. Absolutely. What about some of the feed throughs? So I, I've read more and more about those and, and uh, looks like you, your neighbors need to be using them too if you're <laughs> going to use them, but, but what are some of the things that, that we see? So we, we, there's some really cool products that are out there that are feed through for insecticides, okay? Uh, so, and how they work is one of two ways. There are three main classes of products that are out, out there. We have methoprene, diflubenzeron, and actually an organophosphate, Raybon. Uh, so those three are, are labeled for in the feed. And it can be supplied in the mineral, in a feed block, uh, delivered in a mixed ration. So there's a lot of different options where we can deliver these products. Now what they do is they don't get absorbed into the system, those chemicals, those insecticides pass through the animal, get in, into the manure pack. Remember some, several of those flies actually lay eggs in fresh manure? Right. Well, it's sitting there waiting. So it either kills uh -huh. the larva <laughs> or disrupts its ability to turn into an adult. So it, it, in, in theory, it's genius, right? right. Uh, you know, highly effective. However, flies can travel. They don't stop at fence lines. So even if we're using a really good feed through product, which we try to get those in the feed rations or in the mineral uh, prior to the vector season by about a month. And here in Kansas, we try to get it in about in, uh, it, you know, middle of April to beginning of May, yep. but we get it in the ration before the season. But hey, the neighbor's operation, they, those flies can travel several miles. So we can't rely on the feed throughs by themselves. Usually we have to team them up with some of these other products for proper use. Makes perfect sense. Well, thanks so much for being on the show today. Always a pleasure. And thanks for watching. Remember, if you want to know what we do at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. And always work with your local veterinarian. With Dr. A.J. Tarpoff, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at Kansas State University, and we'll see you down the road. Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health, 
With the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals. They're here, they're hungry, and they can't be stopped with ivermectin. Choose Safeguard when you deworm your cattle to take out resistant parasites like brown stomach worm, cuperia, nematodirus, and others. With Safeguard's efficacy, you can kill more resistant worms in your cattle so you don't leave potential on the table. Consult your veterinarian for the diagnosis and treatment of parasitism. Then bite back at safeguardworks.com. At Daniels Manufacturing, we know that you're not always going to be able to work cattle in a permanent facility. That's why we have designed portable equipment built with the same quality and innovation as our stationary equipment. Our portable equipment can be set up with stationary corrals or just pull the pins and move to a new location. And setting up our portable double alleyways and our all hydraulic portable chute is quick and easy. Keep yourself and your cattle safer with less stress working in the field with our portable equipment. For more information or to find your perfect portable solution, contact Daniels Manufacturing Company today.